Colorado's ski resorts wait for the smoke to clear, but at what cost to tourism? On this week's Fast Track, we explore what effect the legalization of cannabis will have on the tourist trade in Colorado. We take to the slopes in Kazakhstan. The skiing has been amazing. I've been really impressed with the skiing. And later on the Fast Track Travel Clinic, the Dutch and Belgian high-speed trains that aren't going anywhere. And can you really have two passports? Hello and welcome to Fast Track. I'm Fiona Foster. Thank you for joining us. Now, this week we're going to bring you something of a ski special because in the Northern Hemisphere, there's still plenty of snow on the slopes. First, we're off to Colorado, a snow-capped US state synonymous with the great outdoors. Skiing, hiking, a bit of mountain biking, well, now you can add recreational cannabis use to that list of activities. Heather Alexander is in the town of Breckenridge, which became known as the Amsterdam of the Rockies when it legalised cannabis use back in 2010. Colorado's beautiful slopes are renowned around the world. Premier ski resorts like Vail and Aspen make this a once-in-a-lifetime destination for many. The town of Breckenridge might be among the lesser known, but it's just as unique, not only because of the fabulous outdoor life, but because of its liberal view on cannabis. The drug was decriminalised here in 2010. Marijuana has been legal for medical use for longer than that, now, by the end of the year, licensed stores like this one will be free to sell cannabis to anyone over 21. Breckenridge Cannabis Club, this is Caitlin. We were very excited about it. It's something that we've always been in support of, and uh, we were happy that Colorado decided to uh, go ahead and vote yes on Amendment 64. Caitlin and her partner grow their own plants in this warehouse nearby. They preen and handpick and finally prepare the buds for their customers in as many forms as they desire. Right now, those customers still need to have a recommendation from a doctor, but once the rules and regulations are finalized, they can sell to anyone. Caitlin thinks they'll be swamped with new business. Awesome, thank you for coming in. Sweet, thank you. Appreciate it. Maybe we'll see you later today. Yeah. This is an area that depends on tourism. In the summer, it's hiking and fishing. In the winter, it's a wonderland. Thousands of people come to Colorado every year and you can see why. The scenery is breathtaking. There's all these wonderful winter sports to take part in. But from next year, things will be different and people will come here for a different reason. What we don't know is how much that will change the tourism industry here. The town has a strong family image. It attracts people of all ages coming to test their skills or learn from scratch. It's safe, it's friendly and it's open. Given that, the step to decriminalise in 2010 was a significant move. So did that change have a noticeable impact? We were vilified by 50% of the people and 50% of the people that wrote us thought we were the most enlightened community around. So, and, and many people said they would never come to Breckenridge. Uh, we received emails from fairly conservative groups and uh, I don't see people walking up and down Main Street smoking pot, just like I don't see people walking up and down Main Street drinking a beer. Uh, so I, I haven't seen, personally, a big change in the town of Breckenridge. You know, there's the, the possibility that we could become a kind of a tourism sort of uh, mecca, uh, you know, an Amsterdam of Colorado. Uh, I think it's kind of an unknown what it's, we're likely to see. 
Colorado is one of only two states to legalize pot. Washington state is the other. The new freedoms could be a big draw for those interested in trying it out, but tourism officials are keen to play it down. We don't expect to see, you know, pot shops all around downtown Breckenridge. And I think, you know, perception may cause some people to choose to come to Breckenridge or to not choose to come to Breckenridge or Colorado as a whole. But in the heart of downtown Breckenridge, we really don't expect that we'll see much to change. Nightlife is already part of their marketing agenda, though, with alcohol currently the accepted recreational drug. Police worry that people will start mixing the two, and there are other concerns. I think from a public safety standpoint, I want to really understand that public safety is not compromised uh, through the use of these recreational drugs. There's a lot to work out. Will there be spot checks on the slopes or even roadside testing for drivers as there is for alcohol? Authorities have the rest of the year to figure it all out, so it's likely to remain fairly low key at least for now, and that's fine with the Cannabis Club. I don't see any need to promote uh, the industry. I think people who already want to consume their product are going to regardless, and being able to legally purchase from a store should be enough. I know that the town council uh, would, con would like to continue to keep the uh, family-friendly image that the town has, and, and we have no opposition to that. Each town will make its own choice about the level of advertising. Some may choose to exploit the opportunity to attract the crowd that are interested. But visitors so far also take a fairly undramatic view. I think probably drinking liquor is probably worse than smoking a little cannabis. So if the people want to enjoy that here, have at it, you know. Yeah. I, I and it's usually and usually it's done recreationally anyway, yeah. so in Colorado being a destination just yeah. sort of because it's leading sort of that that wave of change in America. I mean, it's certainly a big thing, and it's awesome that it's happening. You know, I think the culture around um, cannabis is so much more casual, especially in Colorado, like versus maybe places, I don't know, on the East Coast. Um, it's just not seen as as much of a threat anymore. Not all of America feels like that, though. Just over the border in Utah and Oklahoma, penalties are still severe, so no crossing state lines and definitely no taking your pot out of America. Those that want to will have to enjoy their high right here in these Rocky Mountains. Heather Alexander reporting from Colorado on the recreational use of cannabis there. And do let us know your thoughts on that story. Is Colorado about to turn into the new Amsterdam? Give us your thoughts, please, at our usual email address, fasttrack at bbc.com. Now let's have a look at what else has been making headlines in the travel world this week. If you're heading to northern Japan, then be warned, a number of people have died after a powerful blizzard swept across the island of Hokkaido. More than eight people have been killed, including a family whose car became buried in snow. A number of others froze to death after leaving their cars, which had become stuck. A strike by workers at Spanish carrier Iberia against mass job cuts has forced the cancellation of hundreds of flights this week. The strike started on Monday, the second of three five-day stoppages scheduled by Iberia ground and flight staff. The companies say they and three other carriers had to cancel a total of 1,400 flights, many to destinations in Spain and Europe. If you've got a flight booked on Iberia this weekend, check before you head to the airport that your flight isn't affected. If you're in San Francisco this week, you may have seen the city's Oakland Bay Bridge lit up as part of an art installation with more than 2,500 white LED lights running for almost two miles. They'll now light the bridge from dusk till dawn for the next two years. The Bay Bridge is a year older than its more famous counterpart, the Golden Gate Bridge. And finally, you might want to think twice about dancing on a plane. This video shows the internet dance craze the Harlem Shake and has caught the attention of US aviation officials. In the footage shot last month, students and other passengers are shown dancing in the aisle on a packed flight from Colorado Springs to San Diego in California. 
Frontier Airlines now say it's working with the US Aviation Authority and they're investigating possible safety breaches caused by the prank. No rules broken though by this group of divers who took the dance craze underwater recently off the coast of Cancun in Mexico. Time for a short break now, but when we return, Simon Calder will be fighting your corner as he takes on the airlines in our regular travel clinic. And we're in the mountains of Kazakhstan. <laughs>